So let, let's talk about Red Bull, Dr. Robs, because there's a couple of things that I saw. It it, it differed ever, ever so slightly to the render that we got on the livery reveal. Um, but what stuck out to me, Dr. Robs, is that the car itself wasn't an evolution as advertised. It was an, a revolution. Adrian, he was kicking on massively here, absolutely not resting on his laurels at all, which is a risk. But how's what what's he done for your fluid um, aero eye, fluid mechanics aero eye even? So from, from my side, I think something that we talked about last time when I was on the podcast with you, Cameron, was whether or not Red Bull was going to have a horizontal inlet in addition to the you know, the vertical inlet that they showed during the launch. And the answer is yes, they also have a horizontal inlet. Come to find out, they call this the shark inlet. That's a bit of inside information that uh, the team uses. So they call it the shark inlet. And it really does look like a shark. You know, you have a bit of a blunt nose on the forward edge. Um, we talked about underbite, overbite last time, right? So this is definitely an overbite concept more with the shark blunt nose edge and then you've got the intake just under that and you still have maintained the vertical intake which is still there along the monocoque but very interestingly enough right behind the driver's head where what we saw during the car launch was a very sort of a, a bluff bulbous shape um, that would lead into the gullies it's actually an intake and yeah, that just kind of blew my mind. I thought, wow, okay, what are they cooking up here? I mean, for me, the way that that looks is they're just taking all this sort of chaotic air that's coming through the monocoque, and they're almost like like a hoover, just hoovering all that sort of chaos, that chaotic air up, running it through this channel. And the reason why the gullies themselves, the shoulders that are there, what did you call it? You called it, I think, the, the, the gun, gun barrels. Yeah, uh, yeah, gun barrels. Yeah, the gun barrels. So the reason why the gun barrels are so large is because there's actually a duct running through the gun barrels, which is quite interesting. So there's a duct running through there and the duct exits on the side just below the roundness of the gun barrels themselves. So quite a lot of innovation there. Um, the floor edge was tweaked a bit from, and we did not get a chance to see the floor edge during the launch because it was fully covered up. So the floor edge has been tweaked. They still have a bit of this ca cascading winglets that run up with a nice forward curl and then a detached rear edge wing. So um, I think just a, a modification, but. Unbelievable, Dr. Hobbs. I, I can't believe that they would borrow things or steal things from an ostensibly designed, failed design philosophy in that Mercedes. And some of the guys on the grid have spoken about this, uh, as you alluded to, that there's something going on with those gun barrels. It's not just for show because they're so thick and robust, aren't they? They're doing something. Yeah. And again, people are speculating about the many different reasons why. Um, Dr. Robs, I, want, I wanted to talk about the, the cooling, specifically on the Red Bull, because... It caused Mercedes an issue when they tried to do the zero pod stuff. But how, and again, lots of speculation in this and conjecture, but how can they get away with having such small cooling ducts? Because particularly the horizontal one that you talked about, it's, it's, it's letterbox thin. Dr. Robs, surely they can't get away with that in practice, eh? Yeah, I think one of the things that I originally thought as well when I first saw it from the front was how incredibly slim it is. But Albert Fabrega, he had a picture where it was a bit with the car sort of lifted up or his camera was, was underneath. You can see a bit more of the shape of the inlet. So it's a bigger inlet than what it looks like from the front. It's similar to the way that the AMR24's inlet looks looks very slim from the front, but when you see it from above, it's very down washing. Now the difference in the Red Bull is that where previously with an underbite intake, where you had this sort of Koanda inlet wing that's down washing the air into the intake, the opposite is sort of happening now with this new shark inlet. So as the air comes off of the front wing, it gets lifted up, right? So you create downforce when you throw air up and you get an equal and opposite reaction down. So you get a bit of downforce from the front wing, but the air is still traveling up as it interacts with the front suspension elements. Now the front suspension elements, everybody talks about downwashing, front suspension, anti-dive. 
truth of the fact is that it's really only marginally making the the air itself sort of start to change direction a bit. There's nothing drastic because it's a very small angle that you can have with the suspension elements um, as far as the angle from horizontal, right? So you're not able to do like a 15 or 20 degree downwashing front suspension. So instead what happens is you still have quite a bit of upwash. Well, what Red Bull is doing now is they're using that upwash instead of trying to get that air to upwash and then downwash to come into the intake. They're just saying, all right, we're just going to create like a shark nose, like how a shark eats an animal and all the, you know, water is going to come straight up. It's going to contact this overbite lip. And then we're just going to capture all that air that's upwashing. And that's exactly what they're doing. So I think that's one of the ways that they're able to make this work is that the quality of the air that they're getting that's coming off of the front wing is quite good. And, you know, they still maintain that vertical inlet along the monocoque that must be doing something other than cooling large, you know, radiators and things. So they must be doing just a small amount of cooling from there or just taking that air and transferring it someplace else. But they still need to cool. Otherwise, it would be outside of the regulation. So, um, yeah, Cameron, to answer your question, I think that's how they're doing it. I think they're just naturally using the tendency of the upwash from the front wing to their advantage. 